the next thing you can see here is DDL. DDL stands for Data Definition Language, and it deals with all the constraints and assertions, uh, which allow you, which I talked to you about uh, when I when I talked about authorization and integrity, where there are some rules and regulations to be followed. So if you want to create these rules and regulations, then you would use the Data Definition Language. If you want to create authorization constructs where you know you give username and password to people, then that would also be done using DDL. Now let's talk about the query processor itself and the components present in it. The first thing is a DDL interpreter, which is right at the at the far end of query processor. This interprets the DDL and that is the data definition language and records it in the dictionary. So this is the place where you would create your tables and you would decide uh, what would be their data types, what would be um, the rules and regulations to enter data into that table. So that is what the DDL interpreter does. When you write from the application side, when you write something, when you write a query, uh, then that query that that code that you have written is interpreted by the DDL. The next thing you have is a DML compiler. DML compiler translates DML from that is the data manipulation language from a query language to low level instructions. Now you need to understand at this point the difference between a compiler and an interpreter. So an interpreter works more like an on the spot translator. If, you, if you're watching something on television where there's a person speaking a foreign language which people do not understand, and so there's a translator present who translates at that moment whatever the person is speaking. So it is happening simultaneously. That's what the interpreter does. The compiler on the other hand gives you some sort of a delayed uh, output. Delayed output in the sense you don't get the translation right at that very minute. It first finishes translating the whole program and then it gives you the output. So you, if you have uh, studied a language like C language, you might know there that the compiler works and creates a .obj file. So this file is actually created because your program has been translated into a machine level language, into an object code. So this code is then stored in the OBJ file, which means your code, your program is translated once and for all. Now, every time you do not need to translate it, it is present in that file and all you need to do is run it. So once you've compiled everything, you don't need to translate it. But interpreter doesn't work in that way. Even though you interpreted the code once, the next time you want to run it, you have to interpret or translate it again. So interpreter is used when you would know that your code is going to be small, when you know that your program is going to be small. And obviously defining a database is, uh, doesn't require a lot of code. Creating tables and uh, deciding their data types. How, even if you're using C language, how much line, how many lines of code do you require to declare all your variables? Very few, maybe two or three. So the interpreter is a skill that working with a code that is having less lesser number of lines. And that's why it keeps translating every time, at every minute, every, every time you write something, it is getting translated. So DDL, that is the data definition language, which is small, and because you only create your database once, that is why the interpreter is used in order to translate it because you're not going to keep on creating the database. Once it is created, it's, it's ready for you to use. The data manipulation language, on the other hand, is going to be used very frequently because uh, many people will access the database, not just a few people. So there will be lots of DML code which is coming from outside into the database system. And that's why you require a compiler 
which can you know translate things and keep it saved also at the same time so that if the same type of code comes again you don't have to uh, translate it all over again you can save time and use the already translated file that you have the ml compiler also makes evaluation plans and performs query optimization so in database language whenever there's a code coming from outside into the database we call it a query because it's known as a question that you want to ask to the database and you get an answer so that's why it's known as a query and so the dml compiler also creates evaluation plans about you know how to actually implement that query and how to uh, make it more efficient and efficient implementation and again this is another a whole chapter that you're going to study so you don't need to worry much about this right now then query evaluation engine which you see right here this is the soul of the whole database management system because it executes the instructions that are generated by the dml compiler so it this is the engine this is the one that's actually working and doing things because whatever instructions are given those instructions are implemented by this evaluation engine and so that's the query processor for you all these things that you see here they are part of the query processor and uh, let me just uh, go back there and explain to you the few things that we missed uh, one of them is the application program object code i already talked about it that when the compiler works it's going to create a file where the translation is stored for future use so that you don't have to translate the code every time you can run it because this is the type of code that's going to be run again and again not not like definition where you are only defining it once so that's why there's a, a an object code file here and another thing that um, i would like to explain is the linker so the linker is something that links all the necessary modules and libraries to your code if you have used c language you would know that sometimes you are writing import mass or import um, stdio.h all these things that you are importing on top they are all the libraries and modules without which your code will not work but you are only writing one line but that one line is actually a huge module a huge a file containing a lot of code so when it is compiled at that time the linker actually replaces those lines with the entire code that is present so that is why it is known as compiler and linker together okay so that's how the query processor works and now whatever is on the top most part you can see that's what we are going to take a look at so this is the top most part of the diagram here you can see different types of uh, users of the database and what they are doing and how they are using the database so we are going to see how uh, what happens here so the first type of users we have are called naive users okay so these are all agents and web users and tellers these are people who do not know anything about databases at all so these are people like you and me when we are accessing a web application uh, when we are accessing our results online or when we are booking flights online booking movie tickets online when we are doing all these things we are naive users because we do not know how exactly uh, the database is stored we do not know how the uh, person who's running the movie booking application is storing things in the database so such users are called naive users and they use application interfaces because these interfaces interfaces are nothing but you know a good an attractive looking application which where you can see lots of uh, buttons so that you can click on them and perform your uh, tasks so application interfaces are used by these naive users they interact using these interfaces 
And then we have application programmers. So these are the people who actually create these applications. So whatever applications are used by the naive users, those applications are created by the application programmers. So they, they do have some knowledge of how the database works and they do know how to program a database. They do not actually create the database, but they use it in their application. So they are called application programmers. Then we also have sophisticated users. Sophisticated users, uh, they use data manipulation language to analyze the data in the database. So they have a little bit more knowledge about the database than application programmers because they are going to analyze the data. They're going to find what is interesting about that data, you know, uh, maybe create pie charts and maybe create bar, bar graphs and all that through that uh, data which is present. So they work with the data. They do not create anything for anybody, but they uh, analyze the data and give you results in the form of, you know, pie charts or graphs and all. And finally, we have the database administrators. These are the main people in the DBMS uh, environment because these are the people who create the database. So they have the central control over the database and they define the schema of the database, which means they design the whole database, everything, uh, what tables, what columns and their data types, everything. They can also modify the schema and the physical structure if they require. So they do not need to know what is at the physical level that I explained in the previous video. They don't need to know that, but if they want to, they can modify the way things happen in the physical level. So they are able to make a lot of changes, not just at the logical level, but also at the physical level. Database administrators also grant authorization. They decide who has access to how much of the data. So they can decide, you know, if, if a person is a naive user, then how much data can that person access? Not all the data. The person obviously should not be able to access usernames and passwords of other people. That would be wrong and that would create a huge security risk. So database administrators need to decide uh, what naive users uh, can access, can and cannot access and other users, of course, not just naive users. Uh, database administrators also perform periodic backups. Periodic backups, backups are required because uh, one of the things in the definition of a database management system is that the data should be persistent. So persistent data would be data that is present in the system for as long as you want it to be. It shouldn't be some data that is you know, present today, but then tomorrow, if you open and you can't find your database. So if this thing happens, you know, there can be lots of errors and failures in the database. Maybe uh, your computer crashed or your server crashed. So due to all these reasons, your data should still be safe. And that's why data has to be copied and backed up in some other secondary a computer or server so that you can access it in case of a failure. So these, this copying of data also has to be done by the database administrator. Database administrator also needs to ensure that there is enough free disk space available. It shouldn't happen that I'm trying to create an account on Gmail and I get an error that Gmail does not have enough space for me to create my account. Obviously, you never get such an error because there's always space available, but the database administrator has to ensure this for you, that there's always space available to store more data. And that's what the database system architecture looks like. And if you understood this, it's really good for you to understand the next things that we are going to study in DBMS. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.